Happy Friday, folks! Thank you for joining me today for the for the devotion. We're up here in Rochester. Beautiful day, nice and crisp this morning. Uh, it's going to be warming up later on. We're in Isaiah chapter thirty-nine. What do you think about that? Isaiah chapter thirty-nine. Here, here. So, <laughs> so he's got he's got a little. Uh, Tube in your hand there. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> All right, so we're in Isaiah chapter 39. This is a transitional chapter in the Bible. So we're ready to read that. Isaiah chapter 39. Here we go. At that time, Merodach Baladon, the son of Baladon, king of Babylon, sent, sent envoys with letters and a present to Hezekiah. For he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. And Hezekiah had welcomed them gladly. And he showed them his treasure house, the silver, the gold, the spices, the precious oil, his whole army, armory, all that was found in his storehouses. There was nothing in his house or in all his realm that Hezekiah did not show them. Then, Hezekiah, then Isaiah the prophet came to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and where did they come from? Hezekiah said, They have come to me from a far country, from Babylon. He said, What have you they seen in your house? Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing in my storehouses that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming, when all that is in your house, and that which your fathers have stored up until this day, shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And some of your own sons, who will come from you, whom you will father, shall be taken away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, The word of the Lord that you have spoken is good, for he thought there will be peace and security in my days. Let's pray. Father God, on this day we ask that you would give us wisdom and insight into your word, and we pray for our nation that is in turmoil. We pray, Lord God, that we would repent and turn to you, that there is, there is much that we need to repent of, Lord God. We have turned our back on you and have reaped a whirlwind. And so, Lord God, we cry out to you, the true and the living God, and pray that we would turn to you in our time of need. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, um, God has done great and miraculous things for Judah and preserving them from the Assyrians. Remember, uh, the 185,000 troops were wiped out by the angel of the Lord when they were coming up to lay uh, assault on Jerusalem. So Hezekiah uh, had repented and turned to the Lord and uh, cried out to the Lord and deliverance came. And then Hezekiah was ill, we saw that in chapter 38, and to the point of death, and God again preserved Hezekiah and extended his years. Now, after all of this, um, the lesson that God was trying to teach Hezekiah is your strength and your help is in the Lord, not in anything else. But what is Hezekiah to? He, he, he takes and he shows envoys from Babylon everything that's in Jerusalem, everything that's in his storehouses. So what Hezekiah is actually doing is, is he's thinking, oh, maybe I can get an ally in Babylon against the Assyrians instead of putting his trust fully and completely in the Lord. And so uh, he essentially stumbles at this point. And here's one of the difficult things for all of us. Can we handle success? Hezekiah was given great success, but he forgot where his strength comes from. He forgot where to put his trust. And then he's starting to put his trust in Babylonian envoys in the, in the nation of Babylon as a counterweight to Assyria. And this is a fatal error that he makes. And Isaiah, uh, the word of the Lord comes to Isaiah the prophet, and Isaiah says, everything that you showed them, they're going to carry away. Now it's going to be a long, you know, over a hundred years later until this occurs, but everything you showed them will be carried away. 
And so that's, uh, that's the message that he's giving to them. And uh, then he really, um, he really blows it in, in showing that, you know, he, Isaiah gives this horrifying prophet, a prophecy that nothing shall be left in verse uh, 7, he says, uh, and some of your own sons who will come from you, whom you will father, shall be taken away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So basically, the prophecy is your line is going to be cut off. The line, uh, literally cut off. Uh, the line of David is going to be ended. Now, the Lord preserves the line of David, though. Uh, miraculously and out of his gracious goodwill, not because of Hezekiah's goodness, because Hezekiah, after getting that prophecy about what's going to happen to his grandsons and great-grandsons and great-great-grandsons, um, he says this, what the Lord, what you have spoken uh, is good. The word of the Lord that you have spoken is good, for he thought there will be peace and security in my days. Oh, that we would have a view of life that it's not just about ourselves right here, right now. But there's a future that we should be concerned about when we're not going to be on this earth. A future of what, what are we leaving for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. And so in all these things, we should honor God and think about what is best for everyone in the future. And so uh, my, you know, my heart grieves for this nation as we have turned our back on God. It, clearly, we have turned our back on God. And we're reaping a whirlwind right now. So my prayer is that all of us as believers, whatever age you are, is that we would repent and turn to the living God. And cry out to God. He is our only hope. He is our salvation. He is our forgiveness. So we pray, uh, we just ask you to be in prayer for all that. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we're thankful for this time together. We're thankful for your word and the truth of your word. We're thankful for your grace and forgiveness that is in our lives. We're thankful, Lord God, that you are patient and long-suffering with us. And we pray that we would repent and turn to you that we have lost our way, Lord God, for the sake of our children, for the sake of our grandchildren, for the sake of our great-grandchildren and those that come after us, that we would turn to you. Lord God, we cry out to you, save us. We have dug in ourselves a huge, dug ourselves a huge hole. We cry out to you, save us and have mercy on us. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a great uh, weekend, everybody. God blessing to you.